All right, so today we are gonna do some slab building. So I have my slab here already made up because we already know how to do that. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do two slab buildings. So if you look at your assignment sheet, mainly we're slab building plates, but we're introducing two new decorating techniques, one called Scraffito and one called Mishima. Very interestingly enough, we are actually not necessarily going to um, really do them today. They require us to set it, set them up for next time a little bit, right? So for today, we are going to just uh, take this slab and we'll do some decoration on them today, but we'll actually really come alive next time. The decoration will really come alive next time. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make some slab plates, right? So you can use any sort of different shapes to cut out your slab. You need one a bigger shape like this, and then you need a smaller shape, but it doesn't have to always be the same shape, right? So I could use one of these as my bigger shape and one of these as my smaller shape. You see that? Or I can use a bigger shape like that and a smaller shape like that. You see how they fit inside each other? So this will be my slab cut out and I'll use this inner one like that. So why don't we do that? Um, let's see, that won't work. Uh, oh, let's go. Let's use this one for the outer one for one and this one for the inner one. And let's use this one for the outer one, this one for the inner one. Or outer one, inner one. So here we go. So we're going to mix up our shape. So here, let's just go with this one. So the first thing is I'll use my bigger shape to cut out the, cut it out, right? So here, point that a little bit. Yeah. Down a little bit so you guys can see. So here I have this big shape. I'm just going to cut this guy out using my needle tool, right? Go. Oh, and this is our last assignment as far as wet clay for the term. So this is the last like new wet clay assignment we're gonna do. So peel that off. And so now I've cut out the circle, right? So let me set this guy aside. Uh, let me just put my slab over here. And I forgot to grab a board. So I'll grab a board from over here. So and now I have my board just to be ready for the next step here. So I have my board and then I'm going to bring a piece of foam over, right? So this is the one inch foam, it's one inch thick. And then I'm gonna take my slab and put it on top of there. So this is just me and my plain slab just sitting here, okay? So then what we're gonna do is take the second, so we cut out a circle and then the second shape will be the smaller shape. So bigger shape cut out, smaller shape for the next thing. But if you look at these shapes, right, they actually, the one side is like this where it's flat, but then it has like these beveled kind of decorative elements coming down the side. And or if you use this side, it doesn't have any of those decorative, it's just a flat square. So let's use this side first. And cause when I push this into my, my plate, my, my, um, my slab here, some of these elements will stamp into the clay, okay? All the way around. So let's just do that. I'm gonna center this guy up into the middle. And now I'm about to push this down into the clay. So if I push this down, you can see that the edges pop up, right? See how the edges are popping? And then I let it go, it's kind of plate-like, right? Now, some of you, this will be really low. If you want a flat plate, you can go this way to stamp it in like that. But let's say I want these edges up higher. You can either one, get a thicker piece of foam from over there. You guys have probably seen the foam. We have lots of this. Or you can get a thicker piece of foam or you can just get another one inch thick piece and slide it under. So now I'm doubled up, which I would almost always do. Right, because I want these edges not to be so flat, the plate to be standing up more. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna push this piece all the way down till it bottoms out against the table. The foam, right, is gonna push back and raise these edges up a bunch. And then I'm actually gonna roll this around. So the foam actually pushes the foam back. The foam actually is able to push the clay back up even further. Does that make sense? So watch, push down and you see that it's popping higher. And then if I roll it around like that, it even forces it up even higher still. And then I let go and you see how 
it's more raised up all the way around. And then before I pull it out of here, I'll pull this back, get my board in play here. And I'm just gonna transfer now this over to my board before I lift this guy out and just pop it over there. And now I can now work, get the, get this guy out of here by just trying to release this guy here, there. And then you can see that it has that inner stamping, those inner lines, right? You see that all the way around the edge, which I think is pretty cool, right? Now that's a decorative thing. So then what we're gonna do with it, so if it needs some correction, right, you can work on it. Like one side's a little bit lopsided. This is a good time to fool around with that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paint a solid color on here. We have these colors called underglazes. So this is a brown underglaze. It says brown underglaze on the label. See that, brown underglaze. And so that looks like this really dark brown color here. This is with clear glaze on top. So an underglaze is a lot like a colored clay that we paint on top and that will give this some color. This is where, and then this side here, the shiny side has glaze over it. You see that? So the glaze we put on top at later, and that will, then we fire it again and it gets shiny. So this is on greenware, right? On wet clay, we're gonna paint the underglaze on. We're gonna wait for the whole thing to dry leather hard, and then we're gonna carve through it to reveal the underneath clay. We also have a few different colors. We have red, which is one here. You can see how that looks in comparison. Red's a really good one. And then we have, I just brought a few of them up, right? You can see here, this is blue, which is really blue. It looks really dark on there. There we go, there's blue. So each one of these, and then there's a black, which is here. And so now you can see the black, how it contrasts between the two. So this one, what we're gonna do is what we did here. I'm just gonna paint, except I'll do it with the brown. I'm gonna coat this solidly with brown. And then next class, we're gonna carve through it like this, but I'm gonna do a more interesting pattern than that. And as I carve through it, the lines, right, it'll be brown, and then you'll see these white lines as I carve through. So here, and that will be called graffiti. Oh, so take these jars, whenever you get a jar, let me back this away a little bit so we can see from back here a little bit. Do, 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 do. Excuse me, there we go. So here, what I'm gonna do is paint this brown underglaze on, let me shake it up. So make sure the lid is screwed down tight and then you shake it up because these underglazes like to settle out and they're designed to work and attach and work really well against the clay if they're shaken up, right? They need to be homogenous, right? So what happens is the clay, the different elements that the minerals in here settle out at different rates so that we always gotta shake it up, make sure it's well mixed. Um, consider these things always poisonous slightly, so you don't wanna lick your fingers or something afterwards. It's not like if you get it on your fingers, it's gonna be bad for you, right? So it, there it is. If I get some on my finger like that, not a big deal. It's like household paint kind of thing. It's not gonna kill you if it's on your skin. When it gets bad is if you eat this or get it into your body somehow, and, or if you inhale the dust. Right, that's also bad. We also don't want it mixed into our clay recycling, right? So we gotta always clean up really good after we use this, right? And then the, any clay that it gets, if we put it on clay and then we decide later we don't like this piece, do not put this clay piece back into the clay recycling, just we'll throw it away. All right, so I have this guy going. I'm gonna get a piece of paper from over here. So this piece of paper now will be, I will put this down on my tabletop so that I don't get underglaze. It's just easier for me to clean up later, right? So I put that down there, put this guy here. And so this one, what we're gonna do is this one, we're gonna have as a fairly smooth one. And then I'm going to, after, so I already shook this up and then I'm gonna paint this underglaze on over the whole thing. Right, you see that? And I wanna get it all in the nooks and crannies. So this one will be a brown one, but I have those other colors. I could have gone blue or whatever. Remember that, remember that this stuff is toxic, so we don't wanna eat this. But once again, getting it on our skin, 
or whatever. Also that if you get it on your clothes, that means you're taking it home a little bit. So be careful. So that's why I always wear an apron, right? Cause you don't want to have it on your clothes and then have it, then you touch your clothes when you get home and then you're eating a hamburger or something later, right? All right, so you see how I painted it on the whole thing? And then I'm gonna actually have to put three coats on there total. So I would need to wait until it becomes a little bit dry like this, which could take like 20, 30 minutes, right? You see how that's non-reflective? And then I would paint a second coat on. If you want it to hurry up and dry, you can put it in the hot box, right? Over to help speed things up a little bit. All right, so this one's done for now. I'm gonna set this under glaze aside because I'll need it again in a minute. Set this guy aside over here. We'll trade this out and bring my slab back. So that was technique number one. Technique number two, I get to do something more fancy now. So that was, that was setting up for Scrafito. So let's go, I think we're gonna make an oval one this time. We made a round one that, oh no, we're gonna go with this guy here. You can cut out any shape you want. So you see how this shape is ultra fancy, has all these little things. So for this shape, I can pop it straight down onto my slab like that. I'm just looking at it, just eyeballing. I could even lightly trace this shape out like we did before with doing the slab cups. So I know that, cause what I'm gonna do is add some decoration onto this first. And we're gonna do a couple things on this, right? Like that, so I added like that. Let's see here. There we go. So I kind of roughed it out. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the rollers and stuff to put a pattern. Ooh, let's go with this gear pattern here, right? This gear pattern's really cool. We'll go with that. And I'm just gonna roll this pattern on, push hard, push hard, push hard, all the way across. Ooh, look at that gear pattern. Looks really good, right? You see that? And then I have this blank spot over here. I could just leave it blank, or since it's like this sort of season, I got some leaves and stuff, right? So let's try putting down some leaves here. I'm gonna wet them down first. So these leaves now are wet, and I'm gonna push these into the clay. You see that? Now you see how one side, you guys know this, but one side's more veiny than the other, one side's smooth. Yeah, I, for me, I want those veiny parts to show up, so I'm gonna put the vein sides down like that. And then, like, since I'm gonna use a small rolling pin, so since I already textured this side, I'm gonna just use the rolling pin over the leaves, the, the leaf to stick it down. Right, and that should do a pretty good job of sticking that leaf down. So you see that leaf is stuck down. And then I'll do this other one here where I'll stick it down really good. I'll stick down this other leaf kind of that way, like that. Ooh, oh, oh, I was rolling over my pattern. Don't wanna do that. So now you could have just done all leaves or all pattern or have a little bit of pattern or you could do stamping, it's all up to you. So now I have everything stuck down. So now I'm gonna take my, this template. So, right, having that outline drawn on there helped me figure out where I wanna lay the things out, right? So that's why I traced this out. Now I'm gonna try to place it back where it was. If you, if you notice there's leaf and stuff sticking out over the edge, that is fine. I'm just gonna have to cut those bits of leaf off because that's off the edge of my plate, right? So I'm, I'm gonna start by cutting off the leaf bits, right? Go around, trace through. Cut, cut off the stems and stuff. Now I'll just dig around and cut through all the way around. Cut off that stem, go around, trace this shape out. I'm not pushing down hard on this little, this form because I don't want to ruin my pattern, right? Woohoo, going around, going around, going around, going around, going around. There we go, so I cut it out. Let's just lift some of this away first. Oh, I must have not cut there yet. I missed the section, there we go. All right, so there we go, it's coming off. There we go, there we go. So there, I got most of it off. If there's any bits of leaves here, I need to pick those out of this clay, right? But it doesn't appear that bad at all. So now we're gonna get my foam back. and transfer it back onto the foam. Here we go. Like that, plop, right? 
I'll move this away over to here so I have room to work. All right, so now just because I use uh, this shape, right? I can use any shape on the inside. I could use a square. Did I go square last time? So I did square on the inside of the last one and it would kind of make sense to go square on this one, but let's try to mix it up. Let's go circle, right? And last time I did this more ornamental side down. Let's go with this flat side like that. So do you think that looks good? Or I could do that. What do you guys think? Oh. Let's go with a square one, right? So I could have done either one, but I'm gonna go with square, and then I'm gonna push down, right? And then I'm gonna roll it around like I did the last one, right? So push straight down, and then go roll, 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 right? I'm rolling it around. You see that? Roll, roll, roll. And the rolling, all the rolling does, right, is push it up higher, and look, how aggressively and beautiful that is popping up in the air. That looks looking really good, right? I'm super excited about this one. And then I'll push this one away. What do I do with my other one? There, here it is. So then I'll bring this guy back and I'll pop it on my board, right? Bring it over, take these away. So now you see that it's on here. Right, and I'll pull this guy off. Woohoo! So now, what do I have so far? I have it textured, right, and leaves on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I can just paint any of the colors, but since I have the brown already shaken up, the reason why I like the brown is because the brown is actually probably the brown and the white have the least toxic materials in them, right? So I'm not necessarily trying to make something that looks beautiful. I'm just trying to make something that looks good on camera. And the brown has very low, it's just iron oxide and clay, basically. So that means iron oxide you actually need as part of your diet, right? And then the clay is not bad for you in general, right? It's not toxic. So very low toxicity rate. Um, but some of the other ones, like the cobalt, the blue has cobalt in there, right? Clean up the rest of them, right? Just assume they're toxic. The, so now I'm gonna paint over everything, including the leaves, right? So let's bring this closer, right? So I paint over the leaves. And so what is the leaves gonna do? The leaves are gonna resist the, um, the thing, right? So I'm painting on top of the leaves. So the leaves are actually not allowing this iron oxide, this under glaze color, right, which is gonna be, I had it, I showed, I showed you the brown tile. It will look like that when it's done, right? So the leaves are protecting the clay underneath from getting that color. Does that make sense to everybody? So then next time I'm gonna peel those colors off. Now I'm starting to paint into these textured areas. It's very important that I get all the way into all the textured spots. So let's pull this up, move a little closer. So we get a really good look. So it's very important, like you can see, let's see, right here, right? I didn't get it down into that area right there. You guys see that? So I need to make sure it gets into the low spots the most. Because what's gonna happen with this is next class, we are gonna make something like this out of this where I take this and I, if you look here where all the blue, I use the blue underglaze on this one right, and I scraped off the, the blue off all the high parts, right, and I'm gonna leave that, I leave the color behind, so I wanna make sure that I get all the underglaze into all the bottom of the texture. It's actually the high points that don't matter as much. All right, you see that? So I just blob it on, blob it on, right, and I'm, so I'm using like the tip of the brush and kind of scrubbing it in a little bit. That makes sense, so. Blah, 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 blah. Almost done using the tip of the brush to really scrub it in a little bit. Right? Getting in, getting in. Now, you do not have to do the edges. You see that edge? I'm not going to this edge because I'll scrape those edges clean next time. Or if you really want them painted on the edges, you see that the edges are really sharp, right? Those edges will fix next class. And if you really want color on your edges, we can add color back to the edges next class. So I'm almost done, right? Scrub, 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 get it all in there. Scrubby, scrub, 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 get it all in there. 
scrub, 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 scrub it all in there. So I make sure I get it all the way around. Now, for this underglaze seems to be going on pretty thick, so I'm just gonna get away probably with one coat. But normally these underglazes will take three coats. So you see how that one's still wet and shiny, right? I need to wait until that dries that it looks like this one here that I made last class, and then I'll paint. You see how that's almost completely dry-ish, right? If I touch it, it's not transferring. Ooh, that's from another spot. So when I touch it, it's not transferring underglaze back off onto my fingers too much, right? So then I will paint another coat on, three coats just to make sure, right? To, that your underglaze is on there good. Three coats will make sure that you have a solid color like this. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this, right? First of all, with this one, we're gonna do what we call sgraffito, where we're gonna carve through the underglaze, right, to reveal the lighter clay underneath. But I need this underglaze to dry off enough. If I try to do it now, the underglaze is pretty wet still. It will just stick back down, right? So I need it to be like trimming dryness before I do that, okay? So the same thing with this one, right? This is what I'm gonna do, Scraffito. This one, we are gonna take this one and just scrape the clay, the gla the, um, the underglaze off all the high surfaces to reveal the texture that we've put on there. So we've already put the underglaze on and then we're gonna scrape it off the surface. That makes sense? So kind of the opposite of what the other one is. So, and if you want to see that example, it'll end up looking a lot like this, depending on what texture you want to put on, right? So if you look at this example, right, this texture, you don't have to have the whole thing textured, right? You can leave spots blank. And then the glaze will look like, oh, what do I do with the black one? will look like this here, right? This one had a pebble texture. Each one of these little oval, ovals was a high, is a high spot. I painted black, I, then I made that texture, then I painted the black underglaze on, and then I scraped it off, and then we fired it with the clear glaze on top. That makes sense, everybody? So everyone should make um, two, of, two of each. So two that are plain that you'll carve on right there, right? And two that have texture, or you can goof around with that leaf pattern if you want to. The leaf pattern thing's kind of extra, so you could put a leaf on here or some sort of thing that, like I did with the leaf. You can cut out shapes out of a piece of paper and then lay them on, and then paint the underglaze over. And then what we'll do here is we'll do this one. We'll scrape this one off next time. It needs to be pretty dry before we do that. Like, and then we'll peel the leaves off to see the pattern. That makes sense to everybody. So I started to, this goes pretty quick. We will fix the edges of the pots next time. We'll fix these rough edges next class once it becomes leather hard. Because if you start monkeying around with these now, you're, it's so soft that you'll end up making the edges actually look worse. Right, the one thing that you can do is work on the edges, like make sure the edges overall look okay. So let's pull this back and make sure that the shape of your pot looks okay. So here, we'll look here, right? So make sure that the edges look pretty straight up and down. You see that? Make sure they look pretty straight, right? So tidy up those and then I'll let them dry to leather hard next class. That makes sense to everybody? Pretty fun. And we got all sorts of different colors of underglazes for you to experiment with. And so underglazes, just to tell you, we're using them on greenware, on wet clay, but uh, next week we're gonna start using them on our pinch pots, right? So I'll talk to you about how to use them on your pinch pots next week. Okay.